the post office charges $1.20 per pound, or a fraction of a pound, along with a flat rate fee of $3.25, which function will most accurately model the cost for a package weighing X pounds? So it's important to first note that we're charging $1.20 per pound or fraction of a pound. So just to make sure we understand what that means, think about what it would cost for something that weighed 1.5 pounds. Well, you've got the, doll, the, the first pound, right? And that pound is going to cost you $1.20. And then you have that half a pound, a fraction of a pound, which is also going to cost $1.20. So in this case, you want to charge two different uh, $1.20 charges. Okay, so you're going to want to charge two times. And so what we want to do is we want to take some a function. We want to find a function which will input the number of pounds, for example, 1.5, and we'll round it up to the number of times you want to charge someone a dollar and twenty. And you're always going to want to round up. You're going to want to take every fraction and round it up and count it as a whole, um, a whole pound. So we know we're looking for something, and based on our, our knowledge of the floor function, we're looking for something which will take my number of pounds will add something to it so that it will always round upwards. And then we want to add on some flat fee, some 325. And of course, we can't forget that what are we doing with the number of pounds that we have? Well, we're going to multiply it by the price, which is $1.20. So let's just use that to go through and, and find everything that, that matches up with that. So A looks all right, but notice I am subtracting the two, not so good. Uh, B is, is Chinese. Um, C, also not right. There's no flat fee of 325 involved. Uh, D is pretty confusing as well. There's no flat fee of 325. E is interesting. We have the flat fee of 325, and we are adding um, in 1.2 times some sort of... Um, what looks to be a floor function that might round up. So we're going to leave E as a potential possibility. Uh, looking at F, you know, we have the, the flat rate, and then we're multiplying 1.2 by some sort of something, which could potentially be a rounding up of the weight, so we'll keep F as well. And we see the same thing in G. So now we want to kind of think about what is, what is the difference, what's going on here. And we'll notice that, that all of them have the flat fee, so what we're really thinking about is what are we going to use the floor function to do in order to accurately round up. And just consider what we're going to want to add to every, um, to every weight that we get. We want to round up. So imagine if you have 1.5 and you want it to round to 2. Well, then you need to add something to 1.5 so that it is greater than 2. And you want to do this for any value. So anything between 1 and 1.999 or whatever, you want to add something to it so that it will round up to 2. So what could you add? Well, think about it. You could add 1, right? S certainly, if you add 1 into some number in between here, then it will round. It will go higher than 2. And when you plug it into your floor function, it will round up. But what would happen if you added 1? Let's say that your your weight was one itself well what should you charge that person if they're if the post office if, if you're weighing something that's exactly one pound well then you shouldn't be charging them you should only be charging them a dollar twenty right so you if you were to add one you would end up with two and you'd be charging them twice so we're gonna get rid of that option of x plus 1 because we don't want to end up with a problem where if you have something that weighs exactly one pound you're going to charge them for two pounds so now consider what could you add to one so that you didn't have this problem well you could certainly add let's try 0.99 okay 0.99 seems to work real well any value that I have between one and two it's going to work for right say you had some value you know 1.5 it definitely would work because you'd add 1.5 and 9.99 and and you get something greater than two and it would round down to two that's that's great but um we want to consider the difference between e and g 
right? What are we doing here? Here we're adding 0.999. And what is the difference there? And so let's just write that out and consider. 1 plus 0.999. Nine, nine. Well, with regards to 1, it doesn't change anything, right? I would have 1 plus 0.99, that would round up to, uh, that, would ra that would go to 1.99, would round down to 1. And same here, this would round down to 1 as well. So where is the difference? Well, the difference is that imagine you had something that weighed 1.01. .01. Okay, 1.01. .01. Well, I'm sorry, not 1.01. .01. That would work for both. But imagine you had something that weighed 1.001. .001. If I could write, that'd be very helpful. There we go. 1.001. .001. Well, what would you have to add to 1.001 .001 so that it would then, well, what should it round to? Think about it, this weighs more than a pound, right? So you should be charging them not just $1.20, but twice. $1.20 and another $1.20. So you want this to round up. Well, if you add 0.99 here, you're going to get 1.991. And that's still going to round down to 1. So this is not going to get it done. What if you added 0.999? Well, then you're going to get exactly 2, and that's going to round to 2. The greatest integer function will take it to 2. And so this would be more accurate. So we want to choose G. It's not that E is necessarily incorrect. It's that E, or sorry, G does a much better job of taking in, in, in to account the fact that you might have a very, very accurate scale. And then you're going to want to um, kind of limit your error by adding a number that is even closer to 1. For part B, we're going to want to test this out. So we're going to consider a situation just like this where you have something that weighs 4.001 pounds. And what should that cost? Well, this is 4 pounds plus a fraction, so we should be multiplying 5 by the number of charges. So what I would be looking for, right, is I'm going to take 5 and I'm going to multiply it by 120 and then I'm going to add the flat fee. And certainly you can do that on your own. 5 times a dollar is going to be 5. 5 times 20 cents is another dollar. So this is all going to equal $9.25. And and what you'd want to do is you'd want to plug this into your equation, and sure enough, you'd get exactly that. And you'd explain that that's correct because you have something that weighs 4 pounds plus another fraction of a pound, which should cost 5 times $1.20 plus the flat fee.